Every year when we get this committee together, we talk about who the obvious candidates are. The term no-brainer gets used a lot. And uh, our final inductee is the biggest no-brainer probably in the history of this event. Uh, uh, to introduce our final Hall of Fame of the night, our athletic director, Mr. Dave Marsh. Thanks, Travis, and uh, congratulations to all our inductees. It's one of the highlights of my job, really, is we select the class, and I get to uh, catch up with new people back from the past of Northwood and uh, just realize how many special people have come through here, uh, like Jill and Sophia, Mike, and, and I've known Chris for a long time, so it's uh, congratulations. You guys deserve it. It's great to, uh, to connect with you all. My first football game when I was at Northwood, 1998, was against Michigan Tech. We played at Midland Stadium. It was a circle of health game, night game. And the very first play was a kickoff, and D.A. Jones returns at 99 yards for a touchdown for 7-0 lead. I'm like, whoa, man, we're on our way. And uh, we proceeded to get kicked around the field the rest of the half and uh, about for three quarters. Um, until we, uh, I'm not sure why it took Coach this long to bring in a new freshman named Sleepy Tolly, who uh, played for the first time and just started lighting it up around the stadium. But we ended up losing the game 44-34. And, uh, you know, so I go down to the field to uh, say, hey, Pat, you know, good effort, you know, way to play hard. And he turned and just glared at me like, we didn't come here to try hard and <laughs> play hard. We came here to win, and we just got kicked around. And so right then I knew that, uh, that we meant business, and Pat meant business, and, uh, and that his competitiveness was not to be trifled with. Uh, uh, but the beauty of Pat was that he was a great competitor, but uh, he was a great competitor in the right way. He desperately loved to win. Losses ate him. We'd, if we had a tough loss in the next couple of days in the office, he'd be like, oh, man, Dave, I, I got to find a way to not take these loss, this so hard. I'm like, well, I guess just this is who we are. So, um, But uh, despite that competitiveness, he did not uh, let any of that compromise his, his integrity, his faith, his family, uh, his devotion to his family, and to doing things the right way. One of the great things about Pat... He was that competitive, but every game that we had, whether it was on the road or away, whether it was a great victory or a bitter defeat, he'd do his quick thing with the media, which he never really liked too much, and then he would play football game with his boys and their friends in one of the end zones, no matter where it was. Just a truly special thing to, to witness. And... Uh, um, so one great memory I had, we played at Grand Valley one year, and it was homecoming for Grand Valley, and they had fireworks going to be uh, at the game, at the end of the game. And we beat them pretty bad that day. And by the end of the game, the only people left in the stadium were Northwood people. And so there's Pat playing football in the Grand Valley end zone, and the fireworks are, uh, are going off. Just a great, great memory. Yeah. Andy remembers that well, too. Um, so everybody knows about Pat's success as a coach, all-time winning as coach, championships, coach of the year, NCAA playoffs, a little engine that could, a little Northwood beating up the big boys and uh, winning these championships. Um, I always maintain that Pat was the best college football coach in the state, regardless of division, and I, I truly believe that. That's how great a coach he, he was. Um, in addition to his success coaching, a lot of uh, you folks that haven't been back in a while, you, see, you say, man, this place has changed so much. You know, with the turf room, the Bennett renovation, the weight room, that's because Pat uh, was a great fundraiser, and he went out a lot with Brian and uh, went out and got the funds because he believed in what we're doing. He's passionate about Northwood and what we're doing, and 
And he was successful as a fundraiser because he would share that passion and the people he talked to wanted to be a part of something like that. And that he lived, uh, he was passionate about that, about Northwood, his family. Um, that's how, how he lived. And he was very successful, um, but at the same time had a solid grasp on the big picture. It's to compete hard and try to succeed, but in the whole scheme of things, what really ma matters is making a difference in people's lives, in particular in young people. And uh, a good example, I remember uh, we had a conference in Washington, D.C. a few years ago. We met up with Chris Wilson for lunch, I think it was, or maybe dinner. And Pat's real purpose in, in meeting with Chris that day, Chris needed a, a class or two to get, to get his degree. And so he met with him and said, you are going to promise me right now you're going to get that class done and get your degree. And uh, which Chris did, and uh, but I think that was coach still coaching you and still making a difference in Chris's life. Um, so go mad is not just a team slogan, but it is a way of life for Pat. Um, Sherry mentioned when she went through his office this summer and found a piece of paper that said, "My goal is to make a difference in someone's life every day." And uh, Pat was a rare person who could achieve a goal like that. And I thought one of the most telling fruits of, of this, uh, living this out, and that he truly made a difference was you know, this summer and in, in the last uh, month, um, dozens upon dozens of former players, colleagues came from across the country everywhere to come visit to want to make sure to say thank you and tell stories and uh, say what a difference what he made. It was truly an incredible thing to to witness and uh, very few people get to experience something like that that Pat did but but then again there are very few people who lived a life like Pat did um, most importantly though Pat's motivation to go mad to make a difference was his his desire to live to please God he had a peace because he knew his destiny uh, was in heaven because of his faith in Jesus Christ. His faith in Jesus was his rock, which made it, which made it okay to play football with your kids in the end zone after a tough loss, because he was he was uh, not defined by the outcome of the game, but he was defined by his faith in Christ. <clears throat> so I was blessed to work. Blessed to work side by side with my best friend for 17 years. I always be grateful to God for that. We were shared similar faith, similar uh, deep, intense love for our families, and we shared about that and how to make ourselves better husbands and fathers. And uh, I will always be grateful to God for that. I miss Pat deeply every day. I think the best way to honor him, this is a great way to honor him, but the best way to honor him for all of us is to try to, to live like he did, to treat each day as a precious gift from God and, and to make the most of it and to go make a difference. So I'm very proud that at this time I get to call up his son, Zach, who I now get to call a colleague. I've known him since he was a little guy, and now he's one of our coaches and uh, so I'm honored I get to call him up along with uh, Sherry. So ladies and gentlemen, on behalf to introduce Pat Reitma, his son Zach, and wife Sherry. All right, uh, this, is, this is an incredible honor to be up here and accept this uh, from my father. My wife asked me uh, while we were eating dinner if I was nervous for this, and I said, honey, compared to eight hours ago, this is going to be a cakewalk because, uh, as you can tell, we had some other things to take care of today, so. I'd just like to start off by thanking uh, our family, all the aunts, uncles, my dad's brother and sister are here, uh, my mom's sister is here and her family, uh, just for your support throughout this entire uh, endeavor. My grandparents are here, you've been with us the entire way. Uh, we've continued to keep fighting through this and we're going to continue to do so 
um, and we couldn't have done, done any of it without you guys' support. Uh, so thank you for that. And from Coach R, stop crying because we got the ax. And in all reality, he's up there smiling ear to ear after the way our, our guys played today. Uh, I've been reading a book uh, this fall. We've had a couple nice long bus trips, uh, Michigan Tech, McKendree. Uh, we got a couple more lined up down to our tour of Ohio that we'll be starting next week to go down to Columbus, play Ohio Dominican. And, and the book I'm reading is 25 Ways to Win with People by uh, John Maxwell. It's a great book. It's a follow-up to his 21 Laws of Leadership uh, that he wrote uh, to start his, his career. And as I'm reading through it, I'm blown away by all the things that my father did to win with people because at the end of the day, that's ultimately what, what's important. Uh, and some of the things that, that stand out as I've read through it uh, are, are a few of the following. Uh, the first one is let people know you need them. And that's something he did every single day, being able to coach with him for a year. He made it uh, known to us as coaches that we were a vital part of the success. He made it known to our players that ultimately they're the reason for our success. And for his success as a coach, he would be the first to attribute it to the great staffs that he had and the great players he had. You know, players like Chris Wilson made him look like a better coach too. Another thing uh, that, that he, he always was, was important was to praise people in public and to believe in them and, and to kind of spearhead that and wrap that up as well. Another point in that book is that to dream big and to believe in people's dreams. And, and that was a big part of that was one of our four pillars that we have as a program is to dream big. As Chris alluded to, he, was, he had the dream to go reach the NFL, and that was something that tied right into what Northwood was trying to do and what something my father believed in in terms of, of allowing people to dream big, pushing them to chase their dreams, encouraging them. To, to reach their dreams, and, and Chris is a, is a great testament to that. He had the, the mindset to come and play in the NFL, and, and he did that, and, and I'd, I'd like to say that my father played a, a small part in that in, in making sure that he didn't, didn't scoff at the thought. He, he encouraged it and, and, and uh, created a culture that allowed for that to happen. And then in closing, probably the most important thing I've read in this book, the thing that rings the truest is, is the uh, importance of passing the credit to others. And as I've alluded to, that was always something that, that was at the forefront of his mind. You know, players like DJ Jones and, and DA Jones and Tommy Tyson and Sleepy Tolly and Chris Wilson and Kyle Colby and Tony Johnson are, are players that I grew up watching, and, and as my father would say, they're the reason for his success. They're the reason that he is viewed as such a great coach that he is. He found ways to unlock the keys to their heart and, and make them believe in themselves and go out and achieve great things. And so on behalf of my father and our entire family, uh, it's an honor to accept this award for him. And in true Coach Reitma fashion, I'm going to wrap it up because I know he'd be rotten to get home and watch the primetime game on ESPN tonight. I want to take a moment before we finish up to publicly, and I'm going to say this is from everyone, to thank the Reitma family, because it's obvious how much of an impact Pat made on everyone's lives. But the reason that Pat was the man he was is because largely of you people and your family and what you did. So thank you to the Reitma family for helping making Pat make such a difference in all of our lives.